So today on the show, I'm calling all investors and business owners to join us because we're going to be talking with an expert on spendthrift trusts. And all business owners, investors, owners of small business can benefit from this conversation. We talk about spendthrift trusts that that trust that not a lot of people know about, but what is more important is that you don't know how it can benefit you to, to save money and to plan for your future and to learn about some ins and outs that are, are legitimate and legal so that you can plan for your future and protect your small business. But you know the drill. If you want to hear our expert tell us all about Spendthrift Trust, you need to stick around to find out. Welcome to Waste Up Wardrobe. I'm Christine Vartanian, an attorney turned personal style expert and image consultant. As the founder of Jade House of Style, I am passionate about unveiling the inner confidence of my clients by developing their personal style and dressing them for success. But is getting dressed up still important in our virtual world? Well, that's where my experience can help with what I call Waste Up Wardrobe. Waste Up Wardrobe is a podcast for all things you need to conduct an outstanding Zoom meeting. It's about how to dress for the camera, but it's not just about the clothes. It's about everything you need to know to show up on brand and professionally for the camera. Join me in the Waste Up Wardrobe studio to discuss how to navigate this virtual world and dominate from behind the desk. Well, welcome Waste Up Wardrobe Nation. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Waste Up Wardrobe, where we bring you a new show every single time where we are talking about how to show up on camera because this is about Waste Up Wardrobe, but it's not just about the clothes and how you show up physically on camera. It's about your mindset and everything entrepreneurship. And today I have a pretty cool topic that I'm going to be talking about and a pretty cool expert who's going to tell us a little bit of some secrets about something called the spendthrift trust that not a lot of business owners know about that they can certainly benefit from. But before I go there, I want to say thank you to my super awesome producer, Rick Moscoza, who's always in the green room making this whole show possible technically. And so I want to make sure that he's acknowledged because without him, this show would not be. Uh, I also want to say thank you for joining us and always telling a friend about Waste Up Order and what we do here. And I want you to know that we are on a lot of platforms that you can catch us on. Like we are on Instagram and uh, we stream every Thursday at 1130 Pacific time live here on Facebook. You can also find us on iTunes, of course, that you can that can help you like just listen to us as you walk down the beach uh, and get some really good brain entrepreneurial nourishment as you do it. So uh, just know that and we would love it if you went and rate us and review us on iTunes and uh, told us what you thought about the show. So I'm going to start bragging about my guest that is coming on now because she has uncovered and discovered some really key technical things that can really help small business owners and entrepreneurs and investors as well. And so when I learned about what she does and uh, what she has to say about this specific kind of trust, I was very curious. And I thought that most business owners would be curious as well. So let me get started by introducing my guest, Sally Marie Gimmon. She was uh, motivated to become a real estate investor when her mom became sick in October of 2018. She's also an insurance agent. She was an insurance agent for 20 years and now shares her information weekly in her real estate group and Win Win Women TV. In July of 2020, she bought a bank-owned property for $20,000 that would go to auction for $50,000 when COVID um, restrictions lifted. She knew her capital gains would be kind of an issue, and she did a lot of research to find out how the rich paid so little in taxes legally, and this led her to the Business and Beneficial Spendthrift Trust. So she's going to answer all our questions with regard to Spendthrift Trust and how they might benefit you as a small business owner or an investor. So please help me welcome uh, my guest today and expert, Sally Gimmon. Hi, Sally. Hi, Christine. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this. Yeah, I am really looking forward to our conversation. I feel as though 
It's a conversation that is a technical, it's super technical conversation, but the way from talking to you and just reading about your work, I feel like you've been able to break it down in very simple steps, um, giving bullet points and hacks and things that people can really um, digest easily when it comes to this really cool area of the Spendthrift Trust. But before we get into your expertise, <laughs> I always like to allow the, the audience to get to know you personally. And so I'm going to ask you some this or that questions about life and lifestyle. Okay. Are you good with that? I'm ready yes? for it. Okay. So if I were to ask you, um, East Coast or West Coast, which would you choose as your favorite? Wow. Probably East Coast because... Um... A lot of history there. You've got Boston, you got Philadelphia, um, fantastic diving. So I'd say East Coast. See, that is a really, you have a really good reason for that. It is much more historical and it is very cool and deep. Well, I like that. And if you were to travel somewhere and on sort of a adventurous journey, where would you go? My favorite place in the world is in Northern Ireland. It's called Giant's Causeway. It's oh, these yeah. uh, rocks that on a clear day you can see over to Scotland. And I've been there in the summertime. I've been there in the wintertime. I've been there when it was snowing. It's just my favorite place. Ah, so you like travel? Yes. And uh, travel by, okay, by, by plane or by car is best for you? As kids, we traveled with a pop-up trailer behind, uh, being pulled by the family station wagon. Think of the Oswalds. You know, that was us. Um, we traveled all over the West. Uh, a plane, you get on and then you get off. I, I, I love to stop at these quirky little places, like the biggest uh, ball of yarn or the biggest, you know, the, 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 shoe, the shoe house, things like that. You can always find something neat to look at. Yeah, that's a really good way to travel. And, you know, somebody told me that you might have stepped on the soil of more than a few states. Can you tell us if that's true? That, that This is true. Yes. I find, I, in uh, 2022, I finally crossed off my last state, uh, Louisiana. I, I drove through it on my, when I was moving to North Carolina. Wow. Well, that actually Louisiana is one of the states I have traveled to. And my I have that's on my bucket list to go to all 50 states, by the way. So you, you've already done that. And that's amazing. Uh, and Louisiana was one of my favorite states, actually. I love the art and I love the French Quarter. I loved all the little uniqueness of Louisiana and New Orleans that you don't get anywhere else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that is one state I've been to. I have I can't say I've been to all 50, but that is something I am I would love to do one day. So that is awesome. So you've been well traveled and definitely, you know, the thing is if you're from if you're American, you should be at, you should have visited every state, don't you think? It, it, it just my father was a pharmacist for the Indian Health Service. So in the summertime, we would go to different reservations. So that's why we ended up in North Dakota, South Dakota, Idaho, um, places like that. And he always made it fun. Uh, always had us looking at things, going places. It, it was a great way to grow up. I, I, I got to see so much as a kid. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, you got a good story to tell about childhood. That's amazing. So, so I want to delve into this topic that you have cracked the code for. Uh, would you say that would be a good description? You've cracked the code on the Spendthrift Trust? Yes. Okay. So first of all, I want to break this into little nuggets because to, to, to most people, this might feel like very technical of a topic, which it is, and also might be overwhelming. So I want to break it down into little nuggets for the audience to digest. So the first thing is, could you just define what a spendthrift trust is or what that is? Excellent. The, in the United States, 97% of all trusts sold every year is what my mom and dad had. Uh, Susie Orman talks about this on TV. That is a family trust. The only thing it does is avoid going through probate and then it dissolves and goes away. The spendthrift trust is what the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Carnegie's, U.S. presidents have. This is going to go from generation to generation. It's a non-grantor, so somebody else sets it up and signs away. It's going to uh, save you in four very important ways. 
save you federal taxes year after year, generation after generation. It's going to keep your information 100% private. You're not, uh, you won't be, uh, if you are sued, you won't have. Well, on that note, Sally got stuck talking about the uh, Spendthrift Trust, but she'll be back with us. And, and the reason I wanted to bring Sally on is because she is, um, she really studied the ins and outs of Spendthrift Trust. Now, I am going to take over the show a little bit until we get her back into the studio because, you know, we had that little dip in probably the internet. But um, I was fascinated that this can actually be something that people don't know a lot about, but can really benefit from. It's like those little secrets that you just don't know what you don't know, right? And it, it's really important that to, when you uncover these secrets to share it with a lot of people. And so that's why I really wanted Stella to come on and talk about Spendthrift Trust and give us her insight into how it served her as a business owner and how now she helps other business owners um, see the benefits of it. So uh, she has her, her company uh, is uh, the trust is you.com. So that is also her website. And on her website, she also shares, she has a, a I believe it's a podcast and she'll talk to us more about it um, near the end of the show. Uh, she talks about how um, you can um, use a spendthrift trust to save federal taxes legally. And also there's this new act that she brought up when she was talking to me called the uh, No Reporting 2024 Corporate Transparency Act. So this is coming up. This is like this is in real time. We're getting this information ahead of time. As soon as she gets back on, I'm really um, anxious to hear her tell us about that. And um, apparently there's like all these rules and regulations coming down the pike in 2024 on this act and that we should know about. So uh, the, the thing that was also fascinating is that she was an investor. And so she you know, she invested in multiple properties and then she felt like, oh, this is great. She took the the proceeds and paid off some debt and she felt like, okay, great, this is fantastic. But then she realized that the capital gains were going to be counterproductive for her. So she came, that's when she started researching and finding out about the Spendthrift Trust because she was curious about, well, how come rich people don't have this problem, right? So um, um, I think that um, Rick when Rick is going to come on real, right now because he's trying to get her back into the studio. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about this until we get her back into the studio. And um, um, maybe Rick can has shed some light on, you know, uh, what he thinks. If he's ever heard of the Spendthrift Trust, I know he's trying to work on getting her back as well. So he's doing a lot of a lot of work and this is the thing about live shows right oh there you are i have no idea what just happened i'm so sorry so what happened is what i warned you against to prepared you for exactly when we talked about that earlier i'm like oh nothing's gonna happen and it just did i'm so sorry about that it's okay i was squeezing the juice uh, about out of spendthrift trust of everything I learned from you in the five minutes before the show. I talked about the Transparency Act of 2024, top level. So I gave the people I gave the people an overview, <laughs> and now um, we left off where you were defining what a spendthrift trust is. So why don't you just reiterate that? Spendthrift trust is not your mom and dad's trust. Uh, the spendthrift trust is going to save you federal taxes. Keep your information 100% private. You'll pay no judgments if you get sued. The old adage from Nelson Rockefeller, own nothing, control everything. And also, you won't have to do the yearly paperwork for the 2024 Corporate Transparency Act that starts January 1st from the Treasury Department. So few uh, people know about this because they have not announced it this yet, but it's going to affect almost every small business in the United States. If okay. you're currently an LLC, doing business as or corporation, you won't have to do the paperwork until January 1st of 2025. You've got a full year. If you start a new LLC doing business as or corporation, you'll have 90 days to do the paperwork. If you do not do the paperwork, you could be fined $10,000 or two years in jail. 
And if you don't do it correctly, you would be fined $500 a day. So again, I want people just to know that fact because so they haven't even announced it until December 26th of 2023. Yeah. Talk about an overwhelming idea, right? But we now, you, now we have sort of the overview and, and we're going to take this bit by bit and really dissect it for the audience so people understand like, you know, what's their action item? What's in that? What's, what do they need to be looking out for? And, and, and um, what can they do to prepare for, for this act and for um, how they can use the Spendthrift Trust to benefit them? So, you know, you gave a really good overview of the Spendthrift Trust and all these things. Tell me kind of overall, how does a Spendthrift Trust tie in with this 2024 act? that's going to be enacted? Because I am trying to understand the connection between the two. It seems connected. Excellent question. This comes from England way back when King Henry VIII, the famous king for chopping off his wife's heads, he started the Church of England. He went to go tax the lords and ladies of England. They went further back to the Magna Carta. It came over to the United States, came over to the colonies while we were still part of England. The law firm I work on behalf of inherited a trust that turned 350 years old in 2023. This is, most people don't realize the current tax code went into effect in February of 1913 and the Barron families, the rich families like the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Carnegies, put this into the IRS tax code so they can continue to save taxes. I happened to read a book. I, I got on a payment plan in 2000, uh, when I did my 2019 taxes because I wholesaled seven um, houses and paid off all my debt, but got in trouble with the IRS. I found, I found a private law firm, and I want to tell as many other U.S. business owners, 1099 income earners, and investors, this is, the, this is out there. You, can, you too can have this trust. Start saving federal taxes. The business trust it will save you federal income taxes, and depending where you are, I'm um, not making fun of people in New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Illinois, Kentucky, or California, but you have state income taxes, you can save that too. And then for the beneficial trust, that is for any and all U.S. investors. You're going to save capital gains, interest income, dividend income, rental income, and royalties year after year, generation after generation. This, the, um, the Rockefellers Trust is seven, year, seven generations old and has almost 400 people all using the same EIN or employee identification number. Um, you just uh, get, if you have an LLC, it's very similar to working with an LLC. Mm, I see. So <laughs> again, very technical information, right? So how did you use the Spendthrift Trust itself when you, you know, when you got to the point where you, 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 you invested in these properties and you gained, you know, the benefit of selling them and then you were faced with this capital gains, how did the Spendthrift Trust help you or what did you do to help with that? Great question. When you did my bio in the beginning, talking about that house I bought in July of 2020, I got the contract for $20,000 in my LLC. I didn't start the trust until September of 2020. So I just had to do, I Googled it, I uh, two bill of sales. I moved it from the LLC to my name. And then the second bill of sale from my name to the trust name. I'm living in Phoenix. I drove to the bank. Um, my banker, Jose, uh, he, he had to notarize it. On the first bill of sale, I handed him $10. He made a note. On the second bill of sale, he handed the $10 back to me. So consideration was made. Went home. I just scanned the two uh, bill of sales to the attorney in Raleigh. This house was in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, which is about an hour from Raleigh. Next day, the attorney from Raleigh asked for the first page of my trust. And then when everything opened up again after COVID, the house finally went to auction August 28th of 2021. I, I paid $20,000 for the house. It went up to, started at 50,000 and went up to over $64,000. Yay, Sally. I made $44,000 without this lifting hammer. Easy, easy real estate deal. More importantly, I saved $10,350 in capital gains that would have been due um, April 15th of 2022 because it was done through the Spendthrift Trust. The, this trust, um, as long as the trust is going, you, it, 
I'll never have to pay those capital gains. There, there is a real estate thing called a 1031 exchange. You have to keep doing a 1031 exchange to save the capital gains. This trust just does it for you automatically. Well, that's interesting because I have heard about the 1031 uh, exchange, but I, so the, so then the proceeds of the sale, do they stay in the Spendthrift Trust? Correct. So the Spendthrift Trust, you're going to put everything into it. Um, when I moved to North Carolina, when I went to the DMV to register my car, I put it into the trust. Uh, my, my house, um, the trust pays for my electricity, the trust pays for my mortgage, the trust pays for my homeowner's insurance, the trust pays for my electricity, for my garbage pickup. Um, the, so all the only expenses? All my expenses, correct, correct. So, and then when you open up the bank account, you're going to get a debit card. You know, um, I, I bank with Wells Fargo because I have family all over the world. That Wells Fargo is the easiest thing to work with. Um, mm -hmm. And you just use your debit card to, you know, if you need to buy something or do, do something with it. Um, just to give you an idea, you're talking about small businesses. Most people don't realize when you sell a business, if you've had it for more than a year, you're going to pay the federal government 15 or 20% of the sale price, the profits to the federal government. Just to give you an example. One of my clients, um, they sold a 42 year old family restaurant. They, they uh, started the trust. Uh, they didn't pay for the trust until they got paid for selling the, the restaurant. Then they paid for the trust. But because of that, they are going to save at 15%, $460,000 at uh, 20%, $600,000. Jim, the husband, he's 69. His wife, Marianne, she's 64. What if one of them has a stroke? What if one of them falls and breaks, you know, their hip or something? That's six figures they get to save that, you know, for, have a good retirement. I mean, most people don't realize how much the federal government has their hands in, in your pockets, unfortunately. Of course. So let me ask you, uh, what is the policy behind the spend thrift trust? Like why? Why do they allow that? Correct. Uh, when the tax code went into effect in uh, February of 1913, it was put into uh, the tax code 643B, way up high. Most accountants, not making fun of them, I, I, I'm a dyslexic, so I transpose numbers. Most accountants work in the 300, 400 level. Also, with the trust, you're going to file a 1041 tax return, which gives you better benefits than filing a 1040 tax return. Most people file 1040 tax returns. You have to have, um, uh, you can't just file a 1041 if you want to. There's uh, special requirements for it. With the Spendthrift Trust, it uh, has been in front of the United States Supreme Court two different occasions. Both times the Supreme Court has favored uh, with the Spendthrift Trust. I've got case law behind it. The, uh, the, the law firm I work on behalf of, the Benson Financial uh, Spendthrift Trust, it's been around for 72 years. Uh, Robert Benson was a Harvard Law professor. He studied this. He wrote He wrote the um, the uh, Benson Financial Trust. He started a law firm They uh, with his partner. They left it to two sons. Now grandson has this. 72 years, not a single trust has ever been audited. And when you do start a trust, you're going to get a, a documentation saying if for some reason the IRS is going to investigate you, the law firm free of charge. Six years ago, one trust did get investigated by a senior IRS agent. He flew down to uh, Houston. He went uh, to the law firm, into the, the boardroom, spent half a day looking at things. He signed off on it, but all of that was taken care of by the law firm. The, the, the people who had the trust didn't have to worry about that. And is that the law firm that you're affiliated with? I'm sorry? Is that the law firm that you're affiliated with? Correct. Correct. Okay. So I, 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 the, the, um, I'm a representative of uh, the law firm. Uh, it's called the Benson Financial Trust. The law firm is now the grandsons. So the uh, law firm's change has name uh, has been changed to Rosen uh, Law Firm, but it, it's continue on. They've got four trusted. They, they're there to answer questions. Unfortunately, there are over a million attorneys in the United States, and only four percent of all attorneys are trust attorneys. A textbook that trust attorneys study in law school is called Scott and Asher on trust fifth edition. That's for your financial planner or your CPA. But, you know, this is documented, you know, the, the law firm inherited a trust that turned 350 years old in 2023. 
This has been around since we were a colony and it's as legal as legal can be. It, it, it just, you know, I, I happened to read a book about the Rockefeller's trust and during COVID I had time to research things because I knew I was on a payment plan with the IRS because of capital gains. I started researching it. When I started my trust in September of 2020, I, I became the first female um, mastermind host, a host or hostess in my real estate company, a real estate group to teach other real estate investors how to save money. And then I started my own company in March of 2020 because just to help small business people, I mean, I, my family, everybody in my family has a small business right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Most people do have small businesses that are Correct. entrepreneurs or in business. So um, just to convey it in a nutshell. So the policy behind it, what it like the purpose behind it was for was because of those big families to save on taxes. That's and so and and how is it different than like another trust? I'm I'm trying to understand this better and I want the audience to understand like what is why is a spendthrift trust any better than a, another type? My mom and dad had a family trust. This is what Susie Orman talks about on PBS television. The two major differences um, is my parents' trust was revocable. That means it ends when their lives ended. The spendthrift trust, the full name for it is irrevocable, complex, discretionary, non-grantor spendthrift trust. The second big difference, what my mom and dad had, they were the ones who granted the trust. When my dad, my mom died first, when my dad died second, the, the trust dissolves and goes away, I, you know, avoids probate, but that's all it does. The spendthrift trust with the five elements is going to go from generation to generation. That's irrevocable. Complex means it can hold money day to day, week to week, year to year, month, uh, you know, as long as it wants. Discretionary, whoever's a trustee can make the rules for um, the beneficiaries. So if I decide... I'm going to leave 90% to one of my nephews and only 1% to all my other nieces and nephews. They can't take that. They can't uh, like, a, they can't go to court, like on a will. It has to go that way. Then the non-grantor, this makes it completely private. When you start a trust, you're going to have someone who is not a trustee sign up. They're going to be the settler for the trust. And then they're going to be the, um, the, 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 uh, uh, trustee for 10 minutes and then sign themselves away. This makes the trust completely private. My parents were the grantors. When my father passed away, that trust dissolves and you know everything has to be split up. And then the final part, the spendthrift, that's been in front of the Supreme Court two different occasions. It's contract law. So even if Congress changes the IRS tax code, as long as the trust is um, already started, they, uh, as a contract, they can't break that contract. It, it, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. I always like to know when something sounds really great and something I want to look into, um, I always want to know the downside. Everything has a downside. Everything has cons. What is the downside of the spendthrift trust? It's, it's a little bit different than working with, with you know, th than what you're dealing with. Um, you're going to have to go to the DMV. Uh, transfer your vehicles into the trust. Uh, with If you just have the beneficial trust for investors, the downside there is the three things it does not cover are personal food, personal fun, uh, and personal fashion. So you do a demand letter. Um, just to give you an example, I, I don't want to confuse people, but my car back in 2015 when it was brand new, I paid $27,500 for that car. I can do a demand letter free of charge up to $27,500. Business trust just covers everything. Um, the only difference that you're going to have to change when you're signing on behalf of the trust, you're going to sign your name, Christine, and then afterwards you'll just put TT, trustee of the trust, if that makes sense. Yeah. If that's the worst thing you have to do, but that's not hard. I mean, it doesn't seem, it's just like little technical things. Exactly. You know, and, and, and you know, there's a little bit of paperwork. There's a little, uh, some things you have to do. Um, there's an entire team, you know, myself and an entire team of the law firm that are going to answer your questions, walk you through it, but it'll start saving you thousands and thousands of dollars. One, one of my, one of my clients um, in California, he's a dentist. His wife is a school teacher. Unfortunately, 
the, uh, his wife, W-2 income does not get covered, but he, he started the trust. All his, all, all of that, that money is going into the, the trust and they're going to save um, federal income taxes and California state income taxes on that. And then with what his wife's making as a school teacher, it lowers her tax break down from, uh, they, they were at, I forget what it was, 32%. She's now coming down to, I think, I think it was uh, 18%. So they're going to save so much money on taxes there too. It's going to leave a le uh, legacy for their family. When he's, saving all, when he's saving so much money in federal income taxes, he can decide what he wants to do with that money. He can pay off their mortgage. They can get a new car. They can start a college fund for their two kids. They can start a charity. It's their money to do with what they want. The first page of the I IRS tax code on the first page, it says it's up to each individual to um, pay as little in taxes as they can. The Rockefellers hire 20 to 27 CPAs every single year to make sure they save money in taxes. I, we're just following in their footsteps. Uh, that's all we're doing uh, to help help other people save money too. It, yeah. It's just a great thing. Yeah. So so the so I I see like I'm starting to see a little bit of the differences and the benefits when you because this is a generational uh, trust. So does that mean that the <clears throat> the money goes in and just kind of rolls over next generation? It's, Correct. It's, so you can't take that back. So, so you, you know, people are concerned because it's irrevocable. When I do my real estate, I sign in the trust's name. And then when I wholesale that house, like the, I just did a wholesale deal at the end of October. Um, I, I got the house. It was a tax lien. I got it in the trust's name. I wholesaled it in the trust name and that money goes through the trust. Um, it's no, no different on that. When I go to buy another car, because um, I, I will just buy, the trust will buy the car. The tr I will sign my name on the paperwork and write TT after my name, you know, tr a trustee. And then it'd be, you know, the car is part of the trust. It's, it's, it's just a different way of doing things. Do, do you, right now, Christine, do you have an LLC or an S corp that you work with or? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. And go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. If, if you know how to work with an LLC or an S corp, it's the same situation just a different instrument, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, so interesting. So I want to get to, because I want to kind of wrap up some of these really important bullet points. But before we do, I just want a little bit of insight into this uh, act that you, you mentioned, the 2024 uh, Corporate Transparency Act. Can you give us a little bit of like what we absolutely need to know just to kind of get our antennas our, in, our inquiring minds just fired so that, you know, somebody can go and research this more just simply. Correct. This is coming from the treasury department. It's part of the, uh, 2020, uh, money, anti-money laundering act. Um, it's, it, 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 again, if you're an established LLC S corp or corporation, you have a full year until January 1st of 2025 to do the first year's paperwork. They haven't announced this yet. They're going to announce this all on December 26, 2023. Kind of a scary scenario. Uh, the law firm I work for is in Houston. One of the trust attorneys uh, goes to church with a senior vice president of a national bank. Back in October, they were having uh, donuts and coffee after church. Uh, the, the attorney went up to the senior vice president and he said, do you know anything about the uh, uh, Corporate Transparency Act? The senior vice president got a big smile on his face and he goes, oh yeah, we're calling it the CTA. We have a, identified at least a thousand accounts that could be questionable about money laundering. All they have to do is identify the account and send it to the Financial Crimes Network, a division of the Treasury Department. The Financial Crimes Network will investigate. If the Financial Crimes Network think, uh, does think it's money laundering, they're going to seize the assets, sell them on the open market, and that bank or the credit union will make at least 35% on the sold assets to their bottom line. Great for the shareholders, horrible for small business people. So again, you know, if you're any, if you're a mechanic, if you, if you have a side hustle, you'll have to do the paperwork. Which they, is uh, you're the, gonna... for the 2024 Corporate Transparency Act, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. I just want to be clear. I want to make sure people 
like are connecting the dots here because it is complicated. And uh, Kristen Correct. Levine just popped in and she's the owner of a small business, uh, Pet Living. So, you know, we have we, a lot of entrepreneurs do listen to the show. So, um, OK, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just kind of want to okay. do a break point for people to kind of you know, kind of start absorbing the little nuggets. So um, so the 2024 Corporate Transparency Act is something that we all as business owners, small business owners need to be paying attention to. Exactly. And, and what they're looking for, you know, um, if you go out to, I think it's, um, you, you can research Financial Crimes Network. I think it's called FinTech. It, the website, the GOV, there, there is a, a a uh, document, BOI document that I, I give to all my uh, potential clients. What they're asking for is your name, your address, your phone number, your driver's license number, your social security number, and your passport. All of this is going to go into a database at the Treasury Department. If I'm a hacker from Russia or China, that's the first place I'm going to hack. I'm going to get all this information. I mean, I, I don't know about you, Christine. I don't give anybody my passport number. I mean, I, I, my passport is, you know, kept safe and everything. So the point though of that is that, is that in a spendthrift trust, you have more protection. I'm just trying to make the connection here because I, I don't see the connection and I, and I want to make sure you, that I'm clear about that. If, you know, if someone contacts me, I'll send them the 54 page uh, BOI uh, from, from FinTech. There are 19 different corporations who don't have to uh, file for this paperwork. The trust is covered in one of those 19, actually number 19, saying they don't have to do the paperwork. Other uh, companies that don't have to do this are any publicly traded companies, you know, on the NASDAQ, on New York Stock Exchange, things like that. But, you know, one of my one of my clients, he has a cleaning company. He has 29 employees and he's just like, I don't want to do this paperwork because he'd have to do paperwork on, on all, you know, the different employees who he's but Technically, his CPA will handle it. Correct. Correct. Well, hopefully your CPA will know. I just don't know if CPAs know about it because it's it's, it's it's not known data. You know, I, I've seen very little outside of what um, the Rosen Law Firm has given us. I've seen very little information about it anywhere. Interesting. Okay. All right. So you have something on your website that people can reference that can where if they want to learn more about a lot of these things, they can go to. Can you tell us how exactly. they can get there? And anybody who's interested, listens to this on the replay or currently is listening with the hashtag uh, spendthrift and shine, which Rick will put up here really soon, spendthrift and, sh and shine, um, you can be, you know, you can, we can just identify you and be able to connect with you. Um, but tell us what that is, Sally. Correct. My website is uh, the www.thetrustisyou.com. Every month, the second Tuesday of the month, I do a free uh, Zoom video where I do a presentation and open up the Q&A. When you do go out to the website, uh, you can also download a free 18-minute video that goes over the, the, you know, the um, Spendthrift Trust. You can watch it on your own time. You can watch it on your cell phone or, or your computer. My personal goal is just to let as many people know about this information. This is not taught in schools. You know, Maybe it's not for you today, but maybe two years down the line or three years down the line, if, you, know, you, you start making better and better income. One of my clients, um, she's been, she's got an Amazon store that sells dog chew toys. All of a sudden in July, she started making really good money doing this. And she saw a video and she's just like, tell me what's this going to cost me my taxes? Because, you know, she always, you know, she's, she's making good money and she doesn't have a CPA. She's been doing her own turbo taxes for, for the past four years. And she's now making some decent money. I suggest if you're a small business person, you should be making gross at least $75,000 to make it worthwhile. Just to give you some ballpark figures, there's seven different tax codes, uh, tax levels from 10% to 37%, seven different levels, and four, four ways to file your taxes. Single, head of household, married jointly, or married separately. And, you know, if you're making $75,000 and you're filing married jointly, with the uh, uh, business spendthrift trust, you're going to be saving about uh, $14,000 a year with the business trust. Doesn't pay the trust the whole uh, completely, 
But in three year, two years, the trust is paid for, and then that money is going to be saved year after year after year. You decide if you're going to start a second business, if you're going to uh, start a charity, if you're going to help other family members out. It's your money to do with what you want because you, you, you're following the footsteps of the uh, rich families in the United States. So a great tool to reference here is your website because you have a lot of information on there. And so that is the trustisyou.com and you have a video there and you have some other information and you answer, you have Q and A's every couple of weeks that people can tune into. So that that's awesome. That's a great tool. Uh, tell us one action item that people can take and put right into action if they wanted to start like dipping their toe or trying to understand spend thrift trusts better, just like in a nutshell. Easy action. Go out to a website called nerd wallet, N E R D W A L L E T.com. And it uh, will give you the tax, uh, the, the different tax levels. And it'll show you, you can, this is why I take my clients out on the 30 minute um, tax breakthrough session. I show them the, the nerd wallet, explain to them how the taxes are done. And then um, I would times it times your tax bracket by uh, 0.9 or 90%. That's how much you will be saving with the uh, business spendthrift trust. Again, if you're an investor, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, I was just remarking. It was, that's very interesting information. Exactly. Because unfortunately so few people know their taxes or how much they pay in taxes. They just, you know, I, I I just take what the, before I became a real estate investor, I would just take whatever the recommendation was on TurboTax. You know, that's all I did. So. Yeah. Yeah. So also just if there's, I, I, I'm gleaning that the main takeaway here of the show is that if you haven't heard about Spendthrift Trust, or if it's never been on your radar, the main takeaway here for the audience is like, go look into it. And Sally, how can people contact you? What's the easiest way for them to contact you if they needed to learn more? Again, uh, at my website, www.thetrustisyou.com. You can set up a free 30 minute tax breakthrough session with me, um, with my clients. Um, I'm here to answer their questions before and after their clients. They all know that if they get a message from me saying, Hey, text me, I'm on a zoom or I talk to someone but I get back to all my clients within 24 hours. Usually a client takes about two months to get used to the, to the trust. After that, it's old hat and it's easy to do. Yeah. Kristen Levine here is saying that she's going to be checking out to learn more, checking this out to learn more. And she's really interested in this idea that, you know, saving $14,000 per year is, oh, sounds like really you know, enticing thing, which for anybody, that would be very enticing. Excellent. And, and again, I don't know when this is coming out, but my next uh, live uh, presentation is December 12th, 4 p.m. East Coast time. Um, again, it will be www.thetrustisyou.com slash save. You'll get the uh, uh, Zoom link. Uh, and I, my, Michael, I get to save taxes. I'm, I, in three years, I have saved over six figures in uh, taxes with the business and the beneficial trust. If I can do this, I want as many other people know the information and make the decision if it's right for them or not right for them. Because some people don't feel, some people might not think it's the right thing for them to do, but I, I, I appreciate that I was in the right place at the right time to find out about this. Yeah. Well, and, and that you've been able to educate us and give us this interview. And uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have to re-listen to the show so I can really digest it a little bit more, but thank you so much, Sally, for, you know, giving us of this gift of your genius and all the things that you've uncovered when it comes to spend thrift trust. Thank you for giving us a tool here and an ability to get to your website and maybe connect with you if you want to learn more Really appreciate your time here today. Is there anything you want to conclude with before we wrap the show? I just want to apologize. I don't know what happened earlier. Thank you for covering for me, Christine. Thank you for having me on the show. My my main issue uh, that I want to let people to know about, the six inches between our ears is the most expensive real estate out there. Don't let it go to waste. Read a book. Uh, get on your, your 
the, the, the your waste up uh, a podcast is a fantastic place to find out information. It just just do something. That's all I ask for yeah. people. Just do something. Love it. Learn, learn, learn. Every day is about exactly. getting better, right? And learning more. And I really, I, I appreciate your last words there and your comments. So, and your genius. So thank you so much for agreeing to come on our show, Sally. Thank you, Waste Up Wardrobe um, audience. I hope that this felt like at least a little window into what a Spendthrift Trust could do uh, for you and your future and your planning and your money savings. I sure am really interested. I'm going to be looking into it more, maybe even have another conversation with Sally. And you know that we're here every Thursday at 1130 live. So this show is live uh, and you can ask and answer any questions live, but you can also listen to the replay. And we're here every Thursday at 1130 Pacific time. Please join us next Thursday and bring a friend. How did that feel? I'm so sorry that happened. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It happens. That's why I brought it up. I mean, it doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes if your your internet gets kind of fussy, it could happen. I'm so glad that I brought it up at the beginning of the show. I don't always do that, but I did. I just, I'm like, oh no. So I'm glad <laughs> you were still there and I got back on. But thank yeah. you for I thought that was a great interview. And um I, I didn't catch the woman's name, but wow, fourteen thousand dollars a year. Think yeah. of that in ten years, she's going to save one hundred and forty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money for her. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can. Okay, so this show is live, Sally. So basically, it was being broadcast as we were talking. You know that, right? Yeah. So, Correct. so, uh, so that is already aired, but it will also be streamed to iTunes and some other platforms for people to watch on replay. And it will live on the Facebook page, you know, evergreen. So if you wanted to go back and look at the comments or connect with people, just go to Facebook and at waste up wardrobe, and you'll see all the comments that are relating to the show. And, and your uh, Instagram, is it waste up, uh, podcast or what was your instagram my handle? instagram is, i do have an instagram uh called waste up wardrobe but uh, up my wardrobe? overarching business is jade house of style uh okay. waste up wardrobe the podcast is just like one of the little um modules of my work so but i'm a uh branding business stylist so i style my clients with wardrobe i get them camera ready i design spaces and studios for them and i also now design full 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 homes so it's really about styling your brand in every area of your life uh ways of where, where does the name jade come from is that your middle name or no it's not my name at all but jade was started uh as sort of a tribute and a, and a resource for women's health and wellness. And I felt like when I started the business about, you know, dressing people with wardrobe, it was about how when you put on a good outfit, it instantly up levels your mood and it up levels your um, emotions. And that had a lot to do with wellness. And so um it was really about, it's not really about the clothes. It's about how the clothes are a tool I use in my work to make people feel confident, great, put their best face forward, um, show up um, brilliantly in, in the workplace, um, wherever they're at. So, Interesting. Excellent. Well, I, I'll, I'll follow you on Instagram. I'm, I, I do my uh, six posts a day. I'm a little bit behind, but I will uh, reach out to you on Instagram. And Wendy, it, it went live. Will you also be putting it on podcast later or, or is it just yes. a live show? 
No, it's live and it's on iTunes and it's on a uh, pod bean. I believe uh, there's a couple other platforms. It streams to and YouTube it's on YouTube. So you'll find it there. Um, yeah, no, it's on the multiple platforms. I think Rick is a little bit more, he might remember more of the platforms because he's the one who puts it out there. Um, but those are the four that I can think of right now. But um, when you follow me, Sally, go to my main account, Jade. If you could, you could see my handle written down right here on my uh, Jade, Jade House of Style, Jade, correct? Jade. And the dot is important because it's Jade dot House of Style. Okay. Jade dot. Let me make sure of that. And I, I don't know if you heard earlier, all the leaves just came down just all of a sudden. So that's why I'm upstairs because there um, I have drapes on the house, but the sun's just sh shining in. So are you Excellent. on the East Coast? Are you on the East Coast? Where are you located? I'm sorry? Where are you located? Just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I see. Okay. Well, wonderful. And it was wonderful to have you. Um, Rick, do you have anything to add uh, for Sally? No, the two I main uh, the two main audio platforms would be Spotify and iTunes. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm show. sorry that happened earlier. Thank you for having me, Christine. Nice meeting you, Rick. Have a beautiful uh, holiday season, okay? Nice, nice meeting you and have a good holiday. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Sally. It was good to it was good to meet you. Thank you so much for all the um, great information you gave us today. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Hey. Uh, wow. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do a speedy recap on that because it's so technical. Each. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was. Well, let the show speak for itself. Just top level. Top level. That that's exactly what I was thinking. Top level. Mm -hmm. Let the show speak for itself. But I feel like it's a. Mm -hmm. it, there was so much juice in there that I have to like, you know. I want people to go listen to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Um, I'm gonna mute and then you can go ahead. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. I need to. Yep. Let me just do this. Okay, when you're ready. Okay. Uh, what was the title of the show? Let's see. Want to know about spendthrift yeah. trusts? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're an investor or a small business owner? Well, I need you to listen up right here. We are doing a show. Well, <clears throat> let me start over again. You're an investor or a small business owner, you need to know about something called the Spendthrift Trust so that you can capitalize on it and learn how you can save money in taxes in a legitimate legal way and grow your wealth. Is that good enough? Yes, that'll work fine. Perfect. In episode 152 of Waste Up Wardrobe, <clears throat> in episode 152 of Waste Up Wardrobe, want to know about one blah, 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 want to know about spendthrift trust. It's kind of a tongue twister. Okay. In episode 152, <clears throat> in episode 152 of Waste Up Wardrobe, want to know about spendthrift trust? I can we pick up from there and I just continue? I'm sorry. Like, can I say after the title or is that hard to pick up from there? No. Um, <clears throat> so I, I can end it like where you asked the question. Want to learn about Spence Yeah, Yes, we can end there. That would, be, that would be great because yeah. I don't want to say that over again. It's just such a tongue twister. Yeah, just go on from yeah. there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
The Waste Up Word weekly wrap up in a nutshell boils down to this. The main takeaway is if you've never heard about a spendthrift trust, you need to listen to the show or go research it because it could save you a ton of money on capital gains and federal taxes. The tip of the day was to tip. Okay. I'm going to skip tip. I'm going to go to tools. Okay. Our guest on the show gave us a couple of tools to use. One was the nerdwallet.com will help you understand how to maneuver around your taxes in a better way. I'm going to start over again. Trusted you. Our guest for the show gave us a couple tools that will help us better understand the Spendthrift Trust. One was her actual website in the trust is you.com. Okay. Our. <clears throat> Our expert for this show gave us a couple tools that will help us figure out what the Spendthrift Trust is. One is her actual website in the trust. Uh, the trust is you. I can't think of that one. I'm saying it fast. Okay. Our guest, our guest for this episode gave us a couple tools that will help us understand the Spendthrift Trust better and how we can use it to save on. Our guest for the show gave us a couple tools that will help us better understand the Spendthrift Trust. One is her website, thetrustisyou.com, and the second one was nerdwallet.com. Check those websites out and just kind of peruse through them because you'll get a lot of information from them. And finally, the action item. The action item she gave us is to go and start thinking about how we can utilize the Spendthrift Trust, go to nerdwallet.com and see how we can benefit from the use of this type of trust. I have mm. to again, yeah. I have to do action item and the tip. I can't think of what she said about that. Let's see. Oh, she also talked about the, the Corporate Transparency Act. Hmm. Tip. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll start with tip. You're gonna have to piece this together, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, and okay. I'm gonna do, okay. One of the tips that we all as small business owners might not be aware of is something called the Corporate Transparency Act of 2024 that is gonna impact many of the small businesses. You need to actually look into that ask your CPA or do some research on it because it's going to impact small business owners and it's not really widely known. Action item, go investigate spend thrift trust and see if this is something that can help you spend generational, no, not spend, save, okay. Finally, action item. Go research Spendthrift Trust with all of these tools and resources I've given you. Watch the show because the expert on our show today, Sally, really talks about that in, in depth. And try and see if this is a tool you can use to build some wealth and plan your future. That should do yep, it, right? that'll work. Yep. Okay, perfect. Oh, so all you... Right. So the tip and tools and actually everything was out of order, but you'll know which one's a good one to use, right? Yeah. 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 Can we kill you want the, the tip? Kill the you want the tip first yes. before the tool? Yeah, I always like to have the takeaway tool tip and then action item. I always like the action item at the end and then takeaway yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. All right. Let me kill this here. <laughs> 